Hey guys, welcome to Cyber with Vic. Let me talk about the few things that we're going to cover in this video. So first, we're going to talk about everything you need on your MacBook, M chip, ARM computers to run Kali. I'm not going to go through the instructions for installing these. I have videos on my channel for, you know, these instructions and what you need, but we'll go through everything you need. After, we'll talk about some specific configuration you need for your Kali VMs for specific tools and programs to be compatible and run properly on your Kali VM. So I'll show you, I'll go into the VM and show you everything you need to run to make sure that your Kali VM is set up properly. After, we'll briefly talk about why I chose to use my M-Chip MacBook. I also have an X64 MacBook Pro. I decided to use the M-Chip MacBook and I'm gonna explain to you guys why I made this decision. Lastly, we'll talk about a specific problem I had running Kali on my M-Chip Mac during you know, the preparation. I'll talk about how I went about dealing with this problem. I'll talk about some different solutions and then we'll finalize the video. What do you need to run a Kali on your M1, M2 and ARM chip MacBooks? So first what you're gonna need is you're gonna need a hypervisor. So a hypervisor is just a fancy name for a program that allows you to run other operating systems on your MacBook. So let's say you wanna run Linux or Windows you can run it directly on your MacBook using a hypervisor. So the hypervisor we are going to download, I'm not gonna show the tutorial because I have a video on this, but it's called VMware Fusion Pro for personal use. It is completely free. So now that you have the program that you need to run uh, Kali on your m -chip MacBooks, now you, all you need is the actual Kali VM that you can import into this program and actually run Kali successfully. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna get the ISO file for Kali from Kali's website and just follow the steps to create this VM. I also have a video on this, so I'm not gonna go through this, this process, but check out my videos below and it'll walk you through this entire process. All right guys, let's talk about what you need to uh, customize your Kali VM so you can run uh, certain programs, specifically x64 bit programs in your ARM Kali VM. So just, I'm gonna show you guys a demonstration. I'm gonna show you first how we can't run an x64 bit program in our Kali VM with how it's currently configured. I'm gonna show you what changes you need to make and then I'm gonna show you how you can actually run this program meant for a different uh, CPU architecture on your ARM Kali VMs. So here we're using Chisel here. Uh, what I've done is I just downloaded um, the AMD64 um, binary here for this program and I downloaded the ARM64 binary here. So here we just unzip them and as you can see here this is our AMD64 it is um, a 64-bit executable and it's statically linked and then here we have our ARM64 uh, statically linked executable. So these are just programs. What Chisel is used for is it is a uh, port forwarding program. You'll likely come across it or a similar port forwarding program in your uh, offensive security journeys. So right now, I kind of demonstrated it here, but I'm gonna show it again here. So we have two programs. We have our AMD64 and our ARM64. So if we just try to simply run our ARM64, we can easily run this program. It says, hey, this is our help menu. If we try to run our AMD64 program, we get an, at an exec error. And it's, it's pretty much telling us, hey, this, this program isn't compatible. You cannot run this. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to uh, how to x84 code on ARM Kali. So I've done this many times before, so I just know uh, this page, but feel free to type something similar. What you wanna go to is this link here. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna follow these instructions. So first what we're gonna do is we're gonna first copy all this stuff. And here we're just gonna update our packages. Um, okay, and now what we're gonna do is we are going to install QEMU user static. And what this is, is it, it is an emulator. And what it helps you do is it helps you, it, it will translate your X64 bit instructions. So when you run your X64 bit program, like the one we just ran, it's gonna translate those instructions so it's compatible on your ARM um, 
CPU. So your Kali VM can actually run x64 bit programs. And B, the bin FMT support uh, package here has a helper script that will help you um, essentially do this process. So let's copy this here. So now with this, with this um, QEMU user static uh, emulator that we've installed, we can run statically linked um, binaries, but we can't run dynamically linked binaries. And essentially, you don't really need to know exactly what those terms mean. I myself am not a uh, professional or expert C or C++ program. Um, but essentially, when you compile your C code, um, if your program is statically linked, It'll add all your object files in at once. So your actual executable has all the files it needs and all the code it needs to run. If your executable is dynamically linked, then as it's running, it's going to reach for shared code and shared object files while it's running. So right now, when we just have installed this, we're okay to run statically linked x64 bit code, but now we want to run dynamically linked x64 bit programs as well. So we're going to need to, um, install the target elf interpreter which is the dynamic linker to perform this dynamic linking and we're going to do this for amd64 which is that x64 bit architecture so i'm just going to copy these we're going to update our packages again Run our final command here. And saying, do you want to upgrade some of your packages? We're going to say yes. Okay, awesome. So we're done now. Let's list our let's list our files here in our directory. Now we're going to try to run that x64 bit program again. And voila, see now we can run our x64 bit programs on our Kali ARM VM. So this is, I would say, these commands here, you can, link, you can look up this URL here. I'll also put it in the link in the description. But when you install your Kali VM on your ARM MacBooks, this is the first thing I would do. I would run these commands. Make sure you can run those x64 bit programs, both static and dynamic programs on your uh, Kali VM. So I personally decided to use the Kali Arm uh, VM instead of using my X64 bit MacBook um, for the OSCP. So I personally found on my X64 bit MacBook that my virtual machine would crash significantly more times. Um, on my Kali Arm uh, MacBook, everything was just smoother, running programs, uh, just interacting with the terminal, just absolutely everything was just such a much more enjoyable experience. So I really preferred to use the Kali Arm VM as it gave me that extra confidence. So the main, I guess, issue that I had when I was using my Kali Arm VM was when I was trying to compile kernel exploit code. So kernel exploits are used as a privilege escalation vector. So when you have a low privilege user and you want to escalate to, let's say on Linux root, or on uh, Windows system, you'd run a kernel exploit in a certain situation if that host or target is vulnerable. So sometimes when I would try to run these kernel exploits on, on my own host, so on the inside the Kali VM, I try to run it on the terminal, I would get this error here. This error states, error while loading shared libraries, cannot open shared object file, no such file or directory. So essentially what this error means is, uh, while it's trying to compile the actual kernel exploit itself, it is searching for an object file during the linking phase and it can't find this file on your system and it says, hey, there's no such file on your system to compile this exploit. So this is a problem that I commonly saw in the uh, offsec discord um, with people using ARM. So I'm gonna talk about kind of my process for going through dealing with these errors. Um, so at first, if I saw the error, I would try to do a quick Google search if there was an obvious solution for this error, if it was a common error, um, and it wasn't that hard to implement the solution, then I would really try to fix the error and then recompile the kernel exploit. But if I had to go into, you know, 
installing the packages that had the shared object files with the specific versions to compile this exploit. I never really went down that path to try to get the shared library files on my host. Um, I had just moved on, assumed it wasn't the right kernel exploit for the situation. So I read a few blogs, um, just like you guys are doing, you know, trying to gather as much information before you go through this OSCP process. I read a few blogs from people that had written the OSCP exam or taken the OSCP exam with an ARM chip MacBook. And a, a common thing that I saw was if the exploit was meant, the kernel exploit was meant to be used as a privilege escalation vector, then it would be able to be compiled on the actual target. So assuming you have a user session, a low privilege user session, you typically have a shell where you're running commands on that vulnerable target. And essentially what this means is you should be able to compile that kernel exploit on the actual uh, vulnerable target that you have that user session on. If you can't compile it on that vulnerable target, you don't need to compile it in your Kali VM and then it's essentially not meant to be. Now I do want to mention that this is what I went through. This is a methodology that I went through going through these kernel exploit errors. By all means, if you want to learn how to uh, dynamically add or just add those shared object files, make sure they're the right versions and just solve all these different types of kernel exploit errors to really see if that kernel exploit is meant to be, then by all means go for it. Those blogs that I read, those weren't offsec staff, those weren't people that created the OSCP or the OSCP exam. So there is obviously a possibility that the kernel exploit needs to be compiled on your Kali ARM VM and then transferred to the host. But for my personal scenario, I went about my methodology as I mentioned above. But if you wanna go into the you know weeds and really try to solve those kernel exploit errors, by all means, that is the safer bet. I hope you guys enjoy the video and I will see you guys next time.